Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Alexei Kolchin with you, and our video today is called Electrostatic Induction. I'll start by explaining the experiment that Andre demonstrated in the previous video, Electric Charges. I rub a plastic tube, bring it close to the electroscope's ball, and we see that the electroscope's needle deflects, even though I didn't touch the ball. And as soon as I move the tube away, the needle returns to its original position. Once again, I bring it close. The needle deflects and returns to its original position. And we need to explain this phenomenon. The plastic tube is negatively charged, and this charge repels electrons. Therefore, the electroscope's ball becomes positively charged, and the electrons move to the clamp and the needle. And since they have like negative charges, they repel each other, and the needle deflects. And now let's conduct another experiment. Here, a wooden rod is mounted on a vertical axis. Now I rub again the plastic tube, our source of negative electricity, and transfer the charge to this metallized ball. And now I bring the ball very close to the rod, and the rod is strongly attracted to the ball, and it starts to rotate slowly at first, and then I can gradually accelerate this rotation, or I can slow it down by bringing the ball closer. From the other side, the rod stops and now it spins in the opposite direction. To explain this experiment, we must consider that even dry wood contains some moisture and conducts electricity. And when I bring the negatively charged ball to the end of the rod, electrons move to the other end. Its end, and this end becomes positively charged and is attracted to the ball. The phenomenon of charge separation and flow in conductors under the influence of external electric charges is called electrostatic induction. The word induction translates from Latin as bringing about. Well, in physics, there are many different types of induction. It is important to remember that our induction is electrostatic. Alexei showed us several experiments. And now we will talk about how electrostatic induction can be used for electrifying objects. Currently, the left ball is negatively charged. We bring an uncharged sleeve close to it, and the sleeve is attracted to the ball due to the redistribution of charges on it. That is due to induction. The right elongated object is not charged, and the sleeve practically does not interact with it. Let's move the balls towards the elongated object without letting them touch. And now the charges on the elongated object should redistribute so that the negatively charged electrons move further away from the ball. Now the sleeve is attracted to the tip due to induction, then it touches it, becomes negatively charged, and repels from it. Let's bring the sleeve to the ball, and you can see how strongly it now repels from it. And now another experiment. The ball is now already negatively charged, to confirm this, let's bring the sleeve to it. It was attracted, then bounced off. We already know the explanation for this part of the experiment. Let's proceed further. Next, we take the ball and bring it from above to the electroscope's disc. And we see that the needle deflects. And when I remove the ball, it returns to its place. We also already know the explanation for this part of the experiment. And now there will be something new. This metal rod is connected via a wire to the central heating battery and acts as a ground. Through the wire, electrons can go to the ground and come from the ground. I take the ball again, bring it close to the disc without touching it, the needle deflects, and now I ground. The clamp. I remove the ball and the needle deflects even more. Why did this happen? The explanation. I will start with the situation we are already familiar with, where the charges on the electroscope redistribute under the influence of an external negative charge, so that the electroscope's plate becomes positively charged, and the clamp with the needle becomes negatively charged. In this case, the total charge of the electroscope, of course, remains equal to zero. But when I ground the clamp, electrons leave the clamp and go to the ground. In this case, the effect of the negatively charged ball is so strong that the clamp and the needle are not just neutralized, but they also experience a deficiency of electrons, and they become positively charged. Now, let's disconnect. 
Grounding. Then we move the negatively charged sphere away from the electroscope. And it turned out to be positively charged. But that's not all. Now it will be inconvenient for me to draw the movement of electrons through the electroscope. And I would rather say, although pedants might not like it, that the excess positive charges move from the disc to the clamp and the needle. As a result, the needle deflects even more. And there is a moral here. And it is that since we are dealing with physics, we need to distinguish between models and reality. And if in reality, negatively charged electrons move through a conductor in one direction, then in the model we can quite imagine. The imagined movement of positive charges in the opposite direction. And say that the direction of this movement is the direction of the electric current. Although, of course, no positive charges are actually moving anywhere. But we remember reality and keep in mind that electrons move in the opposite direction. And I will conduct another experiment related to electrostatic induction. Here in front of me is a plastic plate and I am rubbing it with a towel, charging it negatively. And this plate is metallic with an insulating handle and I place it on the plastic. Now I touch the metallic plate and feel an electric discharge. I lift the metallic plate off the plastic, touch it and again a discharge. I place it on the plastic, discharge. I lift it, another discharge. And this can be done repeatedly. The metallic plate is initially electrically neutral, while the surface of the plastic is negatively charged. When I place the metallic plate on the plastic one, a redistribution of charges occurs on it. Electrons are repelled and moved to the upper side of the plate, while the lower side becomes positively charged. At the same time, the total charge of the metallic plate remains zero, because the charge from the plastic hardly transfers to the metal. We ground the metallic plate by touching it with a finger, and electrons leave it to the ground. The lower side of the plate remains positively charged. We remove the grounding and take the plate away. Now the positive charge redistributes across both sides of it. We ground the plate again. Electrons come to it from the ground. The plate is neutralized. And everything returns to the original state. So the experiment can be repeated again, this device is called an electrophorus, which means electricity carrier. It was invented in the 18th century and improved by Alexei Bolt. And its main advantage is that it allows for the transfer and accumulation of charges. And we will accumulate them using a Leiden jar. A capacitor, 18th century. We will explain how a Leiden jar works in a separate video dedicated to capacitors. And now I am rubbing the plastic plate again, placing a metal one on it, grounding it, and transferring the charge to the Leiden jar. And I repeat this action over and over again. I repeated this action a hundred times, and now I am short-circuiting the capacitor's plates. And a noticeable spark jumps between the balls. And now, after everything Alexei has told us, what do we have? It's time for the final question. And for that, I will return to the experiment with the paper pieces from the first video about electric charges. I rub the tube, bring it close to the paper pieces. They start to move and fly up, being attracted. But the question arises if there is a redistribution of charge on each piece of paper and the positives end up on the side of the negatively charged tube and the negatives on the opposite side. So the positives are, of course, attracted to the negatives of the tube, but the negatives on the paper uh, are repelled by the negatives on the tube. And it seems that overall the paper shouldn't fly up to the tube, yet it does. The question is, what's going on here? Share your thoughts on this in the comments section of this video on YouTube.